big nature of what being a civil servant, um, what, what being a civil servant was about. The proposal that has, was given to the unions about six weeks ago, as I said, will sweep away all these arrangements that have, have stood the, the test of time. The first thing that I think is important to note is that under these proposals, that departments will have the flexibility to design their own schemes in relation to voluntary redundancy terms. And if you remember right back at the beginning when I talked about the strength we have when it's a condition that affects us all as civil servants, I'm sure you'll appreciate that by breaking that down and giving individual departments the right to design their own schemes will be a weakness, and we believe one that would lead to a detriment for members over either immediately or over, um, over a period of time. Um, the compulsory terms, which will not be available in the voluntary situation, are capped at two years' pay and based upon a month's pay for every year of service and two months' pay for every year of service after five years. There will be no additional or enhanced entitlement to early payment of pension and lump sum, as there is at present, with FES and CER. Under these proposals, in the future, the only means of accessing an early payment of pension and lump sum will be either to take it on an actuarially reduced basis or to use the cash sum generated by the voluntary or compulsory terms to seek to buy out the actuarial reduction. And what we're clear about is that because of the limit in terms of two years, that in some cases the sum of money generated by redundancy will be insufficient to do this. And only in compulsory situations will there be limited protection of existing terms in that they will be protected until the 31st of March 2011. Now, the easiest way to um, show you what that means in practice is to give you some examples of what the proposals mean uh, to people who've got the average salary and service amongst the people that, that, that are affected. So, for example, for someone aged 41 who earns, uh, earns £24,000 and has 20 years service, their current entitlement, if they make compulsory redundant, would be £72,000. <coughs> Under the changes proposed, it would be £48,000. So there's immediate loss of a third for someone in that situation. And these are very average examples we've taken from our membership bases in terms of service and in terms of age. For someone aged 51 who earns £24,000 and has 20 years service, their current entitlement, if made compulsory redundant, is for an enhanced lump sum of £24,000, an additional lump sum of £12,000, and an immediate payment of an enhanced pension of £8,000 a year. Under these changes, their new entitlement will be just £48,000 and an unhanced pension and lump sum, which would only be paid when they reach 60. And the most drastic example uh, relates to people, and I've, I've no doubt there may be people in the room who, who fall into this category, who have what we call reserved rights from 1987. And this was when the last changes were made to the compensation redundancy scheme. Anyone who was in a mobile grave in 1987 was able to have what we call reserved rights, some protection from those changes at that particular moment in time. So someone who began work before 1987, who has those reserved rights, who is aged 46, with 26 years of service, they may be possibly redundant. Today, they're entitled to £106,000, and their new entitlement will be £48,000 under these, under these proposals. So whilst I can't give an example of how it would affect everyone, I'm sure you'll see from those examples that we've done about the, that affect the majority of people and our members and within the civil service, that there is a clear detriment, a very real financial detriment to people if these proposals uh, go ahead. Now, the position of the union is very uh, unequivocal. We had these proposals um, given to us uh, about four weeks ago. We met as a National Executive Committee and we rejected them as a National Executive. We didn't even feel so we had to come out and ballot members on these proposals. It was a bit like pensions. You know, immediately you're confronted with proposals that you believe 
you know, are so detrimental to people that, it, that as a union we felt it was correct that the leadership of the union reject them um, outright. Now, because um, it requires an act of parliament to make these changes, the government's obliged to go through an official six-week consultation period, not only with ourselves as unions, but yourselves, the members of the scheme, the departments, and anyone who they, they class as a stakeholder in, in, in these arrangements. Presently, about four weeks into that consultation process, hence us coming around holding uh, meetings like this, explaining to you why we rejected it, and what we're doing, and ca uh, what campaigning we're doing to ensure that it doesn't go ahead. The first thing we're doing is getting legal advice, or have got legal advice, on the legality of the proposals that are going ahead. Our key point here is that people have worked and accrued these rights and entitlements over their civil service career, and these cannot just be wiped out by unilateral change for people who have got these rights over, over such a period of time. The employer's answer to this, which is quite interesting, put it mildly, is that people do not accrue entitlements to redundancy throughout their career. That as civil servants, every redundancy <coughs> payment that any civil servant gets is at the individual discretion of the minister in that department. So in other words, every time your uh, department runs a, a voluntary redundancy scheme, or my department runs <coughs> one, their argument is that the minister in that department, the Secretary of State, looks individually at every redundancy application and decides whether they uh, are going to grant it or not. Now that is just baloney. There is no way that a minister looks at every redundancy payment, and it totally undermines uh, the principle that people have accrued rights. So our first step is along with our uh, sister civil service unions, Prospect, uh, the FEA and the POA, is that we have got QC's advice uh, that we, can have, we would have a very, very good chance of winning a judicial review on these proposals on the basis that they're unlawful, unlawful. That if they try and lay this act in Parliament, then we will be able to injunction that through a judicial review and say it is not correct, you cannot wipe out people's entitlements over these years uh, and that we expect uh, you to honour their arrangements. Our negotiating position, our bottom line, is that we do not accept any detriment for anybody who's accrued rights under this scheme. What we do understand is that if they want to make changes, then they have to apply to new entrants that are coming in and a scheme that is negotiated with the unions to the best of our ability for people who are coming in uh, as civil servants from now on. But we will not accept the detriment uh, of people who have accrued these rights and these entitlements over a number of years. Many people who have faced you know, a lot of their individual financial planning on the fact that if they were made redundant, this is a sum of money that they will be entitled to. And particularly in terms of uh, inefficiency if they extend it to that. What we're also doing is asking members to protest at these arrangements or these proposals direct to the Cabinet Office, who are the employer uh, representatives within government. Over the last two weeks in August and the first week in September, over 6,500 individual civil servants wrote in complaining and protesting at these arrangements. It's quite an unprecedented number and we're really pleased with the way in which members have reacted to this. But we still need people to continue to do that and continue to, tr to protest, particularly around the issue of entitlement that people have built up over a number of years. And that it's, it's, it's incorrect that a uh, proposal should come in that just wipe out the years that people have worked in order to win these entitlements. <clears throat> At the end of the day, obviously, the union's position is to fight people through redundancies wherever they arise. But one of the fears, as, as I said in the beginning, is that the current, these current terms have been successful in preventing compulsory redundancies and we need to ensure that we keep that pressure on in order to make sure that that continues uh, up to date. 